Imagine a future in which we control the weather. Right now, this sounds more like science fiction, where deciding the day's weather is as easy as flipping a switch. But scientists around the globe are getting ever closer to manipulating the weather, and it's just in time. Growing concern over climate change has only heightened our desire to put a cap on extreme weather. We've gone to the moon and invented the internet. Why can't we fix the weather? There have been many well-funded and imaginative attempts to control the weather over the last 200 years. Most have failed. But there has been some success. Back in the 1940s, scientists discovered they could effectively make it rain by lacing clouds with crystals of silver iodide. The lattice structure of silver iodide molecules is very similar to that of ice creating the perfect setup for real ice crystals to form. Once that ice grows big enough, it falls from the cloud, either as snow or, if it passes through warmer air, as rain. This process is known as cloud seeding. Typically, the silver iodide is sprayed onto the cloud from aircraft, but other methods can be a bit more extreme. In the days before the opening ceremony of the 2008 Summer Olympics in Beijing, Chinese workers fired 1,100 rockets loaded with silver iodide into the skies in an effort to intercept and trigger downpours before they reached the capital city. The result? It rained nearby, but Beijing stayed dry. Cloud seeding can only work when there are already clouds in the sky. But one series of experiments produced rain in a most unlikely locale. Back in 2010, 50 rainstorms were created in the Middle East near Abu Dhabi using technology designed to control the weather. Deserts don't typically have clouds, but they do have plenty of dust. So the scientists used giant ionizers, shaped like stripped-down beach umbrellas, to generate fields of negatively charged particles, commonly known as electrons. These particles have a natural tendency to attach to tiny specks of dust. That dust is then carried up into the atmosphere by the hot air rising off the baking desert. Once it reaches cloud formation height, the negatively charged particles will attract water molecules floating in the air, which then start to condense around them. If there's enough moisture in the air, billions of droplets start to form. The result? Clouds and rain. Concerns over climate change and major disasters have only increased our desire to nip severe weather in the bud. Take the case of hurricanes. Draining the energy out of a hurricane is no small feat. Hurricanes release heat at a rate equivalent to a 10 megaton nuclear bomb exploding every 20 minutes. But computer modeling of major hurricanes shows how even one or two small adjustments to the model could turn a major catastrophe into a minor storm. High sea temperatures often help trigger large storms and hurricanes. Scientists estimate around one million mirrors in space could block enough sunlight to cool down the air and sea temperatures. Another factor is seawater, spraying, evaporating, and fueling the storm with moisture. A few scientists have proposed coating the ocean surface with a thin layer of biodegradable oil to reduce evaporation. Still, deactivating a hurricane is a long shot at best because it's practically impossible to predict which of the many disturbances seen in the ocean will actually develop into one.
Tornadoes tend to form in the American Midwest because of the clash of hot air from the south and cold air from the north. Ground zero for this effect is the infamous Tornado Alley, a vast plain running from Texas in the south to South Dakota in the north. The region frequently gets strong wind shear, a radical change in wind speed and direction over a relatively short distance. Wind shear can actually tilt storms, causing them to further intensify. It can also start them rotating. Tornadoes develop from this rotation. Over the past five years, insurance companies have paid record amounts in claims from the damage done by tornadoes. In 2011 alone, they paid a staggering $26 billion. Some scientists suggest that erecting three giant walls running east to west and nearly a thousand feet tall might be a solution. One wall would run through North Dakota, one between Kansas and Oklahoma, and one in Texas and Louisiana. Together they could slow the airflow and curb the tornado activity in the region. However, skeptics argue that violent tornadoes can form anywhere where there are minor differences in air temperature. So will we ever control the weather? Some say we've been doing so for years. Others feel we're nowhere near. One thing we can be sure of is that when those on either side of the debate meet, the forecast looks stormy for the near future.